to get hit by PK Thunder too, but he's in shield, so he doesn't fly anywhere, but he still body blocks Ness. Like, <laughs> that sort of thing is That's possible disgusting. in this matchup. That like, disgust. I didn't even think about yeah, it. Like, there's some, there's some goofy interactions. I was also really thinking of the fact that he can just immediately go in down air, but hey, we're going to hop into <laughs> the game immediately. <laughs> Switching to the, I just like how right away he's showing like, yeah, your multi hits mean nothing to me. Yeah. I'm gonna go into shield. I'm gonna go into speed, and you man, you get slapped by the Buster too. Media yep. five, <laughs> just back airing right in the middle of that side man. You're like, Gak trying to mix up his movement, but because so much area is covered by Kome's swings, it doesn't really matter as much. We got the smash. That's enough going into the depths of the blast zone. Do the 66, you pick. And like, the the thing that's scary is like. Also, like, Gak, how does he stall off stage long enough for Kome to not be able to hit him out of PK Thunder, right? Because Kome still also has access to the jump. Mm -hmm. So he can be, oh, go ahead and... Oh, yeah, Kome can go as deep as he yeah. wants, as long as he has access to speed or jump. Yeah. So, so far, things are looking pretty rough for Gak. He gets Kome off stage. Isn't able to really extend the pressure that much. Yeah. PK, uh, well, like, Kome really aware, and he, he, he understood where Air Slash can connect to get rid of the PK Thunder. Yeah. Because, like, we saw the attempt by Gak to, like, specifically try to steer it into his back, and, like, Kome was just one step ahead. Ooh, I like that frame trap. Not able to get too much more, but every hit makes Shield go away a little bit faster. Yeah. Well, especially the fact that Kome was in Shield. He understands that Kome doesn't really have any more momentum. Like, he, he can't go left or right. He can't go up and down. He's like, all right, cool. You either have to air dodge or you have to take this hit. Another nice frame trap there as well. Or dodge trap, rather. Yeah, the back are able to seal it up, but immediately Kome going right off stage, looking for that forwarder off the mark this time around. Gak trying to get some type of opening, and he finally does with that forward air. But again, the shield is online and going to the buster as well. I, I really like how Gak recognized that, though, right? He found his win on uh, Kome in neutral and just immediately tossed his PK fire because he knew nothing more was going to happen. And oh my god, the damage! <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to hold it in that screen for a while. I was just like, Gee, Piggy, go ahead and finish. But my man just went from like 40 to 128. <laughs> That's the, I mean, compared to Nico, that's the interesting thing about Kome is that he leans hard on, on the different Monado uh, modes, right? Like, he changes into Buster almost every time he's in neutral and it's available, and, like, the opponent is at, like, less than 100% because he just wants to be able to rack on that damage as surely and fast as possible. As he should. Now, look at that. He's, he's taking a look at what Monado RT has left. Now, what, what, what's, what flavor am I feeling today? It's Tuesday, you know, I'm, I'm feeling some speed. Right, that's, that's so much pressure coming off from the Buster up here. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that's scary about Buster is it also does more shield damage as well because it just is a damage multiplier across the board. Yeah, Gap is just trying to get anything going. Because it's also kind of really messed up for him because he wants to try to set up the PK fire, but in speed or even jump. Homie's not going to be on the ground for that long to go ahead and try to set it up. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's more an attempt by, by Gak to, like, he recognizes that he's going to return to neutral, that he doesn't get the rest of the string that he normally would. So he's just like, how can I make neutral as best for me as possible? I'll throw out a PK fire. Oh, cleanly able to neutral air dodge past all of that. Uh, using the full momentum off of the jump. Uh, Gak right back off stage. No man's land not going to... Make that, it back and like, sliced up. When you just look at that forward air and you think through like what options does Gak have in that situation, right? And it's so limited. You can't air dodge that low because then you're just gonna die. And you can't start like PK Thunder. So like what do you do? Like drift back and then at that point Shulk still has a double jump, so he can still jump forward and catch you again. Like really his air. only hope is try to neutral air dodge. Get low enough because he still just jumps. So and then try to double jump PK Thunder, but at the same time we go back to the body block as you were talking about. <laughs> I don't. Kome I don't can know. Ju Kome can just drop down. No, no. He'll, I hope he does it. I doubt he's gonna do yeah, it. I don't but think. It, I don't think it will actually happen. But it was just something that immediately came to mind. It was the most obnoxious Shulkism that could happen in the matchup. <laughs> oh, what? What if you try to recover? But Shulk said shield. <laughs> he's gonna be going to FD. I, I noticed that like when Gak managed to like get Kome like properly in the air, like past like the low percent damage, he actually was able to put on a lot of pressure because it takes a while for the sword swings to actually come out. So Shulk does have a bit of a harder time directly fighting out of uh, juggle, but it takes so much work to get Kome to that percent so you can actually start doing that, you know? Uh, the Kome just carrying on where he left off in the last game, jumping cleanly over that PK fire attempt. And as we talked about a little earlier, G-Pig, it doesn't seem like it's something that you would want to do in the matchup, especially with the Shulk. Mm. Just bopping and weaving over and over. 
Air slash. Oh, when he get in the single hit? But that was actually a really good angle from Gak. Going so close to the stage, making sure that the only thing that Komi can hit him with is one, either a forwarder so he can tech, or the air slash as we saw. Right, yeah. Gak turns to try to catch the wake up. Not able to follow the roll. And just like that, you know, the moment Komei slips back on, immediately goes into speed and puts up the pressure again. And we have, again, that fair offstage. Just such a hard situation, such a hard place for, uh, for Gak to gamble. We see him navigating once he gets close to the stage really well to avoid the risk. And there we go, the tail. Just the part that Gak needed to hit with. Komei, I think, expecting the head to hit him. Yeah, so he, he tries to tech and instead ends up just air dodging. Definitely expected to go into the stage, but that was not the case this time around. Gak, you know, finally gets himself on the board very early this time around in game two. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's another situation where you want to do that option select. Uh, the up B air dodge at the same time, and you get exactly what you need. Right, forward air. Immediate shield to get at a disadvantage as well. Yeah, I mean, reverse nair is just so hard to punish. As Gak, who's just Shulk can just dance around you for a little bit, then he still has his sword in the back to go in and catch you afterwards as well. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Good maneuvering by Gak to avoid the second hit, the up tilt of that buster. It would hurt so much, man. Down tilt actually letting Shulk low profile that back air attempt from Gak. But Komei does find himself right off stage. Has jump online. Okay. I mean, Gak's just trying to call it a roll there, possibly. It's not the down smash. I respect this. Like, Gak recognizes that he's not going to be able to box with Komei when he's in speed. So he just goes to the other side of the stage, waits for him to enter a, like, a mode that he can actually contest with movement of. Shulk too slow in the shield. Nothing for Gak to really fear in that moment, but right now he should be terrified. For good reason. Yeah. <laughs> for good reason. Like, Smash Shulk standing at the ledge is one of the most terrifying things. And you, you like your reward is just that you get to live. You don't get to punish him for like any of those like terrifying mix-ups he can do. Ooh, a nice solid amount of damage. That was like four up airs. Yeah, but it, it got shield completely away. Kome sitting at 141 now. Yeah, just a single grab is all that Gak would need to even up the stock count. Kome just staying in the air, staying in, uh, in speed to just uh, keep the distance between him and Gak so it doesn't happen. Yeah, more importantly, using the reverse neutral air so that back hit ends up connecting to the shield so he's free to run away. But the up smash does the same trick that Gak wants, especially against an airborne opponent. Oh, going to smash so early, I think he was hoping to get a grab and then get another edge guard attempt. I mean, at a, at a really low percent, there's not that much risk to smash, because even if you get hit, you're just going to be knocked further away by the opponent's follow-up, and it's actually going to be harder for them to combo you. And meanwhile, you can get a lot of knockback, maybe to kill them. Ooh! He's swinging to the fences. We got a PK flash coming in. It's not going to connect. Stalling as much as he can to go ahead and try to sweep snap there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's fine. He's fine. He's going to take a ton of damage, but shield coming through for Komei. It's gone now. Wow, the Nair actually steering Komei right past that yo-yo. Okay, he was trying to see if he had smash online, possibly even shield, but now we got a back throw jump. And Komei roll. trying to lever just down air. Oh, not going to line it up. Yeah, he, he, he did not want to go out there, try to get it all, but he finally does it at the very end. So now go up 2-0. Yeah. Komei, like, you can see how hard Komei was really pressing at the very end, too, because of it, like, he was at that 120%. If Gak had managed to return to neutral one more time, you know, another grab would have actually done the trick. So tried to stay in Smash, stuck as hard as possible to Gak, and Komei finally finding uh, the forward air he wanted really low in the blast zone. I appreciate that he's not looking for that forward air every single time Gak is off stage. Like every now and then he's looking for the two frame and he changes it up just so that the times that he does go for the forward air, Gak is that little bit less prepared to deal with it. I think for Gak, one key interaction there at the very end kind of kind of cost him the game. It was when he opted to go ahead and get another PK fire. And when he had that PK fire and, and he up smashed out of it while Komei was in shield, I feel as if he either he went for a forward air or a grab, he would have been in a great position to get yet another edge guard. Instead, he knocked Komei up. And uh -huh. Komei had the opportunity to go land back down, and it led to the whole interaction of that edge guard coming into play. I absolutely see that, yeah. But we're going to be running it back to FD yet again. I think it's a great pick coming off from Gak, especially. You know, it went down to the wire in game two. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. 
so close, but Gak's actually putting on the pressure even though Komei's in speed. Ko Komei just ran straight off the stage like, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch up what I'm doing. Using the shield to just, <laughs> to just for the PK Thunder, like, all right, you got it. Oh, I like that trick though, trying to get uh, Komei to fall into the up smash after pressuring his shield with the down tilt. Not quite gonna line it up, but Gak keeps up the, the pressure coast to coast. Yep, that, finally, up smash is gonna go ahead and catch him this time around. I mean, that's been his main, uh, one of his main anti-airing tools. He either tries to stuff out Komei before an aerial comes out with an air, or he tries to catch his legs with an up smash. Uh, going for the down air yet again, not gonna catch him. But on that up air, or up smash, it's actually interesting, because there's a lot of times when he does that up smash, it gets clanked by the neutral. This time around, he was actually able to beat it. Yeah, it's all about the timing, Nico, the, when the, exactly the nair is coming out. If Komei's able to start the nair early enough, so that the hitbox is already at his legs, then he's sick. Ooh, okay. Oh yeah, there's also vision. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So does a counter <laughs> that we never see anymore. <laughs> wow, the whole world's is oyster, Chief. <laughs> okay, Buster, one more time, trying to lead into some neutral airs, possibly even a forward air. But oh, he's gonna take some big damage from that since he is a Buster. Ah. No, man, just actually switch out to, to shield. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. You're not locked into Buster once the uh, opponent hits you. Yeah, I mean, still he's still sitting at 61 now. 71 after the neutral air. Yeah. Still caught in the corner. Gak doing a beautiful job right now. Just trying to catch him with a ledge yet again. Single down tilt into a forward throw. And Gak, you know, has so much momentum on his side right now. Komei just trying to find a way back to the stage. It's not going to happen there. I think he preemptively went into shield expecting to try to get out of something, but it ends up hurting him at the very end there. Right, and that last hit that let Gak be able to shove Komei off stage was just a further recognition. Oh my no god! No way! Gak being able to follow up immediately with a down air out of the side magnet. That was so beautiful, but I think the big thing that Gak has really adjusted to in that third game was recognizing how comfortable Komei looked to be in the air, right? We were talking a bit about the anti-airs, like trying to line up those up smashes right, those nairs, but like the, the key thing was just recognizing when Komei has pressure on him, he takes to the skies because he has some good air movement, he has that huge disjoint he can try to protect himself with. And if you know preemptively the opponent wants to go to the air, you can catch them so fast before they're even able to do anything. When, uh, Komei landed in the second stock after Gak's string, right? Gak immediately just jumped up and tossed out another forward air, and he caught Komei jumping right at that moment, and that's what let him get that first, uh, that second stock, and then right afterwards, that third stock as well. I mean, what an answer coming from Gak. Yeah. On the verge of going to the loser's bracket, taking that game three very convincingly. Oh, oh man. Now, I mean, this, this is going to be two straight counter picks for uh, Komei now. Yeah, and having to fight Shulk on Smashville is so terrifying. We talked about how this stage He's has already a terrible zones. spot. Yeah, oh my gosh. Komei, I guess, expecting a, a low uh, recovery or maybe messing up his double jump to catch the uh, mid height PK Thunder 2. Yeah, I think he was trying to catch the very tip of the forwarder there, but uh, very fortunately for Gag, that, that was not the case. Yeah. He's able to go ahead and live, but he finds himself right back off stage. Here comes the jump Monado out from Komei, whiffing that grab, and a great neutral air answer. Coming from Gak, just recognizing that, you know, my man missed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. yeah. Very weird. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not sure what quite happened there. Komei now taking his time, kind of letting the momentum get to Gak, because now Gak is the one closing the gap in neutral, and that's kind of placed to Komei's favor. He can just stay spaced out and try to space out his swords, but still getting caught by that PK Thunder tail, and that's something that's been helping Gak so much in stealing out these edge guards. Yeah, even with the jump Monado on the line, he goes high. He does not get a lot of horizontal movement off of his air slot. So very good stuff coming out from Gag. And wow, he is on a tear at the moment. Oh, trying to line that up perfectly. Just barely shy, but still keeping Gag off stage. Another opportunity, gonna go for the air slash this time, covering that entire vertical range. Yeah, and. Honestly, Air Slash actually has an enormous hitbox right in front of it. Mm -hmm. So you will get scooped up basically a whole Pichu away. <laughs> can Pichu be the unit of measurement? Uh, it can be. All right, I'm definitely down with that. I mean, when, when you when you look at Bowser, his claw is basically a whole Pichu. Man, that down strong almost taking it out. Not quite going to kill, but Komei at 126. I like that like, Gact isn't even trying to look for these grabs, right? He just knows Komei's so far ahead of never wanting to be grabbed at those death percents. He's still focused on sniping him out of the air. Yep. And the key thing is the fact that he understands that there's going to be cross-ups on cross-ups. He's just trying to go where Komei's going to be going. He's not going to where Komei is anymore. Exactly, yeah. 
that's kind of the, the key element of, of spacing. Is you just you, you try to let your opponent move into your hitbox. Wow. Yeah, air, air slash slash. barely not doing it. Trying to go for another one. Oh, no. There goes the counter instead, and he dies for it. Okay. Yeah, Komei visibly frustrated at the way that last counter ended up. It looks That's like it depends on where you kind of catch the PK Thunder Rocket. Yeah, I think. I think he got like a tail end at that this time around, and unfortunately, it took him all the way down to the blast zone. On the last one, he, he had enough time to go in and recover. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think part of that is also the, the height of the bottom blast mm -hmm. zone is different between stages. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the exact comparison is between uh, FDA and Smashville, but that could also be a, a pretty big factor. Because I know some stages, like, some characters can down air off the ledge and then still, like, double jump up B and make it back, and then some you just die from the, the down air. Yeah. Uh, I know that's a concern for a Prana Plant, actually, with his back air off stage, because it's so incredibly laggy. Okay. Makes sense, but G Pig, we are now going to a game five. Kome versus Gak. Gak on the verge. No, making this reverse 3 0. Yeah? I, a big thing is just that adjustment of being able to constantly catch Komei in the skies. And from there, the edge guards have gotten more and more devastating onto Komei. The, the tail of the PK Thunder coming through and really just forming a wall of electricity in his face. Yeah, because at that he's point, been able to actually edge guard this time around. Yeah, because yeah, like at, at that point, the fact that even in shield or whatever, like you don't care about the knockback. You're just trying to stop their momentum. And by halting their momentum at just the right junctions and someone's recovery, you can just stop the recovery entirely. All right, here we have it. Game five going to Smashville. Komei immediately going into speed. Quick 22 onto Gak. Gak finds himself right back off stage into the Buster now for Komei. Ooh, I like that parry, but the multi hits on that forwarder. You gotta be careful. I told you, G-Fig, there, there's a scoop hitbox <laughs> on that up B. Gak was retreating with that forward air <laughs> and still got hit. I kind of like, Komei now was really leaning into that instead as his way of deflecting pressure as opposed to jumping out of the way. He he either like air slashes or just prematurely does it if he thinks he's about to get grabbed. I think here in game five, we're not going to see too many risky edge yards out from Komei. Um, most likely not going to be seeing that counter either with the vision. <laughs> Man, I like that change, right? Like. Uh, Komei, like, Gak's respecting all these air slashes, so he throws up his shield now, and just as that happens, Komei runs up and gets a grab, just to force him to want to keep pressing these buttons that he can air slash in neutral. Yeah. Using the shield yet again, just to go ahead and land. I like the action coming out from Komei, while wow, this crab is going to be some big damage. Canceling Buster out as well to see if he can get a combo off of the Buster down throw. <laughs> He's just really leaning hard on air slash. A good button. You were not exaggerating about that scoop and hitbox. Mm -hmm. There's a rising up air. Gak finds himself right back onto the stage. Single down tilt and going to the up throw. He, under, he, he knows that the back the back throw's not going to do anything. Forward throw's not going to do anything. You know, I'm just trying to go ahead and get what I can in terms of percent, but no shield online. Back throw is going to take out that stock. That was such a cool string lead into that back throw. That was some trippy movement and still managing to keep Komei and hits it in the meantime. Gak looking like... More and more, he's feeling confident in his follow-ups. Komei still feeling very confident in that back air. <laughs> take, take away that stock. Going to shield as well. I like how Shulk just took, a, took the kick to the face and immediately was able to move. <laughs> yeah, no, PK Fire is actually becoming a little more devastating for Gak. Like, he, he's not, he knows exactly when Komei's going to be landing now. <laughs> Air coming as we've set Komei's landing. With the eye by Gak, just barely managing to stay over the stage. Doesn't have to worry about a percent, a low percent gimp quite yet. Here we go. go. Needs to be careful with the tail yet again. This time it's the head. Gets the stage spike, takes out Komei, puts him down to his last stock. And Gak's in a great position right now to go ahead and get this set. Only sitting at 58%, but needs to be careful with Buster online from Komei. Mm -hmm. He's even more careful with Smash yeah, Online. Yeah, he's just, he's glued to that corner. Waiting for that bar to go away, and then as soon as it does, now he's still coming to throwing out moves. Oh, he can play yeah. the game again. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I don't think that's quite the edge guard Komei was looking for. No, I think he was trying to rise up with the double jumps to do the down air again, but he ended up grabbing the ledge. Mm -hmm. 
like I said, we're not yep. seeing any risky edge guards coming up from Kome. It's like, if it's not an obvious fair, he can just go ahead and connect. He's opting to try to go ahead and catch him at the very top. Oh, I think, yeah, that vision also a little bit misaligned. I, it's scary to see because it's it's off of his edge guard and prowess that he won the first two games so well. I'm actually not entirely sure if Vision would catch the PK Rocket up. Just because there's usually when Ness gets there, he just grabs the ledge. Right, yeah. Maybe he wanted to drop something, but hey, nonetheless, we're going to keep going through this game. Gax able to grab onto the ledge now. Psy Magnet taking Koming off stage! Okay, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. He's fine. I, got, I got scared. <laughs> if that's how you die in a game five set, just tapped off stage by Psy Magnet, that is not a good feeling. Oh, looking for it. This, this is a big is opening Kome for Kome. He's okay. waiting for an air dodge, and Gak keeping his composure the whole time didn't give him one. Waiting to the very last second to just land there on the smashable platform instead. Trying to just spin the shield. He does, and it goes through it. Oh my goodness, up air not able to get that stock, though. Looking to try to catch the ledge. Kome jumping, just trying to sell out some time so he can get uh, shield back online. Oh, it's here time goes smash, you pick. Not getting that two frame once again. Oh, that's gonna absolutely kill. Gak catching Kome in that smash and getting the up air, closing out that set five, uh, game five. Mm -hmm. And getting that pop off G pick. <laughs> yeah. So excited to make that reverse 3 0. Oh. That was incredibly stressful to watch. Just the, the composure that Gak had in that very last stock, right? Recognizing exactly where the risks were, especially when it was popped up above Komei, not giving him anything cleanly to react to, because that looks to be the headspace that Komei was in. Like you pointed out, the edge guard's so much more conservative in that entire last game compared to the rest of the set. So essentially trying to get only the damage that was handed to him on a platter, and Gak recognizing that, deciding, I'm just not going to do anything too crazy. I'm not going to give you anything to react to that gives you a stock. I'm going to force you to play a little bit bolder than it seems that you're comfortable playing right now. And staying in that mentality, I ended up letting him win that uh, you know, last stock situation. Yeah. Helped him win the entire set. No, and, and even in that last game in Game 5, it wasn't just really the fact that Komei wanted to be a little more reserved. It was yeah. the fact that Gak got to an angle to where he had to go straight up. Yeah. to where he was forcing Kome to look for that down air, and he did not land a single one. So to Gakti, he's like, oh, cool. You're not going to kill me for this, and you do not know the timing at which you get this. I'm going to keep doing it until you make me stop. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I, I think it's actually just like so good for Gak that he found that one angle yep. that he could recover with, <laughs> right? Because he was like... Do it over <laughs> and over. Because <laughs> like he was trying so many other things, and he was just eating a forward air to the face yep. time and time again, but finally got it. I mean, and that's just that's just normal set play mm -hmm. in, in any fighting game. If you find that one option that your opponent cannot handle, you abuse the hell out of it. Yeah. Like, man, if, if he's laying a K roll, if you cannot handle the blunderbuss suck, <laughs> you're, I'm suck damn well I'm going to keep putting you in this thing. The fact that it's so specifically K roll <laughs> means that because, it's... Because you know damn well it's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been seeing it all day yesterday. K. Roll's a goofy character, that's all I know. Oh, the options are broken. He's Looney Tunes. I don't like playing Ido. <laughs>